Jesus is Lord over the kingdom that we are part of if we are born again. And it is the revelation of the kingdom that causes us our eyes to open unto what our part in the kingdom is, what our responsibility is, that Jesus is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. And God, he made the heavens and the earth. The earth belongs to God. And so God has a right to the earth also. And so we've been teaching on these Thursday nights about the anointings of Issachar and Esther the anointing of Issachar, that it is found in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, and of the sons of Issachar that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, and 200 chiefs were at their command, so they had an understanding of the times. And then the anointing of Esther is found in Esther 4, 14, that could it be that you've come into the kingdom for such a time is this. Amen. And so it is all about time, the time that you're in. And so a lot of people, they may believe that they are born just to live a good life, to, as good a life as they can have for the time to pass by and then for them to go on into eternity. Amen. And even though that is part of what God has called you into a good life, you have a responsibility to the time that you are in. When you appear in time, God did that. God put you in this time. Amen. And so you have a responsibility and an obligation for this time for your generation. Amen. You have a responsibility and an obligation to God you have a responsibility and obligation to your generation, amen? And you have a, a responsibility and an obligation for um, the people, amen? Whether they are the people of God or the people on this earth, you have a responsibility to bring people into the kingdom of God, amen? And so you always have an obligation and a responsibility, for the time that you're living in. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about that responsibility. Beginning in Revelations chapter 1. In verses 5 and 6. It says from Jesus Christ. Who is the faithful witness. And the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings. Or the ruler over kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Jesus washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord has made us kings and priests unto God the father and for him to have glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So part of our responsibility as children of God is that the Lord has made us kings and priests on this earth. Amen. And so when we look in the stories, in the lives of Esther and, and David, we see them taking up that authority and that responsibility that God has given and, and we can learn from their examples because God has called us to have a responsibility to be kings and priests in this earth. Amen. So there is a kingly anointing for the body of Christ and there is a priestly anointing. The kingly anointing is to reign and to rule and to life and to rule over the, the, the dominion of Satan, to, to rule over darkness and wickedness, to rule over sin. Amen. And to reign and to rule and to overcome. And also the priestly anointing is to stand before God on the behalf of others. And so we see that responsibility being fulfilled when we stand in the gap, when we when we pray, when we lift up other people, even when we witness and we bring people into the, the, the body of Christ to be saved and, and to be redeemed. We are helping to redeem their life from destruction, that we are representatives of God, whether we, we are standing in that kingly or priestly 
anointing. We are representatives of God in this earth, representing God in heaven. Amen. And then we see it again in Exodus. In Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 and 6, it says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So you see the connection. God says, you will be a special treasure to me in this earth, for the earth is mine. And you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nations. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So God gives instruction to Moses to speak that he wants the people to have a God identity, to, to have a consciousness, a consciousness and an awareness of how special they are to God. Amen. And so we have a responsibility in this earth realm. You know, we see the verbiage in the New Testament that we're called to be salt and light. Amen. We are called to preserve life. Amen. And that, that we are called to be the light of the world. In other words, that light which shines, which brings many unto Christ, as many as who will receive. Amen. And so God placed us in this earth. Amen. And God has given an anointing and God is teaching about this anointing. Amen. An anointing to understand, which is an anointing of wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the consciousness of the kingdom of God, not to be swayed or, or put to sleep or intoxicated by the spirit which is of the world, but to awaken unto the consciousness of the kingdom of God, where we are aware that God is Lord, Jesus is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, amen. And we have an obligation to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength because he is God. He is the one who created us and put us here, amen, and has given us a calling and has given us an election, amen. And so we are called to be kings, amen, but Jesus is the king of kings. And we're called to be priests, but Jesus is the high priest forever, amen, after the order of Melchizedek. His, his priesthood abides forever, amen. His lordship abides forever, amen. And so that, that relationship of the government of God, which is the government of heaven being seen in this earth realm is dependent upon us picking up our mantle and walking in our authority and walking in our anointing. All government is from God, amen. So whether you know it or not, that the things which pertain to the church operates by the government of God and those things that pertain to civil government are supposed to operate by the government of God. There's supposed to be a, a synergy, amen. There's supposed to be a connection between us taking our place as the body of Christ and the ministry of civil government in this, in this earth realm to keep the peace, to, to um, put down lawbreakers, amen, to bring things into divine order from a, from a civil standpoint. It all works together. God has always um, appointed that the spiritual should help the, the, the civil government, amen. If you look in the, the, the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, there were um, ministers who would be assigned to help the king. Amen. There would be prophets who would help the king. There would be priests who would help the king. Amen. So that they would be on the same page with the Lord. Amen. And so that we are called in this earth realm to work with God. So to, to bless this earth realm, God has blessed us to be a blessing. Amen. And so what we're actually doing, we are facilitating the advancement of the kingdom of God by the advancement of the glory of God. It is the glory of God that makes things right. It is the glory of God which causes things to be beautiful. Amen. 
It is the glory of God. It is that which is attached to the Lord that makes things right. That when you are without the Lord, things begin to spiral out of control. Things begin to get in disorder. Amen. That you could take a beautiful island. Amen. That that island without the spirit of God, without the glory of God. Let's just say you take a place, for instance, like Cuba. Cuba was known, amen, before communism as a, a beautiful destination, a vacation spot. It was a beautiful land, amen. And then when they brought in that government, which was not of the Lord, the same beaches, but it's something has changed. The, the, the beauty has departed. The glory has departed there. There is an oppressive spirit there. And so it is the Holy Spirit which manifests the Lordship of Jesus and the beauty of Jesus. When we take our place, Jesus is manifest. Things begin to be beautiful. You, you go into an area, you, you preach the gospel, the people begin to shine. They, they stop murdering each other. That drug uh, addiction and, 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 and things like that begin to depart. And the place begins to be more beautiful. Amen. And so there, there is a battle, amen, for seats of power. The, the seats of power in this earth are supposed to belong to God. And from the beginning, the devil has always tried to corrupt man to get a place. God says, give no place to the devil. Amen. And so God has called us to stand in our place and our anointing as kings and priests. Amen. And so that's why we preach these messages. We've been on these messages for a while. And we know that that faith, amen, that, that you have to continue in the word of God. Amen. Faith, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to continue. You, you, you have to um, seek the Lord. You have to get into the word. You have to be led by the spirit so that you can see, hear, and know so that you can operate appropriately for this time so that your behavior and your lifestyle can line up with what God wants for this time. And so that's what Esther shows. Esther was raised up for such a time. In other words, she wasn't an accident. She wasn't a mistake. She could have said, because I'm an orphan, that I am least, I am less than the least. But God raised her up for such a time. Amen. But still, she had to be activated. She had to receive the word of God and act accordingly. Amen. The same thing about David. Amen. David, his, his reign represents the reign of Jesus. In other words, David was a man after God's own heart who did the will of God, though he was imperfect. His type, the type that he was and his heart was perfect toward God. The type of person that he was, was a type. Amen. And his throne and his reign was a type of the reign of Jesus to do the will of God in this earth. Amen. And so you need to know that. That things are not don't happen by just happenstance. There are things happening there for a reason. Amen. And you have appeared in time. And so these messages are so that you can awaken unto righteousness to take your place in this time because action will be required. Action was required of Esther. Amen. You have to move with God that to, to the offense of the world. Amen. When you begin to move with God, you will offend the spirit of the world. Amen. But your heart is to please God. Amen. So there, what is happening? There is a war in this earth and there is a war in the United States and it has been heightened. Amen. In this last, in these last days. And so if, if you were perceptive, if you were discerning, you would know that something is wrong, that, that there is animus, there is hostility between two groups of people. And if you can identify those two groups, groups of people, it will help you to understand why there is animosity so that you would not compromise nor be on the wrong side. In the kingdom of God, you have to be on God's side. 
You, you have to be one with the Lord, and Jesus has to be your Lord in everything. Often, the Lord will set before you life and death. You will have to choose life. Amen. You'll have to know how to choose life. So there's a war, and it is between the seed of God and the seed of Satan for supremacy in this earth. Amen. They're those that are of Satan, planted by the devil. They are the seed of Satan, amen, the offspring. The, the, John the Baptist said it this way, you brood of vipers. That's what that meant. Who hath warned you to flee the wrath to come? They were against the Lord and against his anointed, Psalms chapter two. Why do the heathen rage? Amen. The people imagine a vain thing. Vain means that which is attached to this world without the Lord, that which is attached. It, it is mean emptiness, futility and folly and foolishness. Amen. To go after a wisdom which is not the Lord's wisdom is empty. It's foolishness. It is the wisdom which is of this world. So there it was an attempted takeover. But God has positioned the church to stop the takeover. The devil, through the Antichrist spirit, has tried to take over the world. There's hostility against the people of God. There's hostility against the word. There's hostility against the church. This thing has been working for a while. And so if the church was asleep and they began to acquiesce, and to be passive as the devil was taking ground and taking prayer out of school and saying that there's supposed to be a separation between God and the government. No, the, the Bible does not say that the word of God, the law that we abide by, the word of God, the principles of God do not say that. That God is supposed to be in the fabric of every part of society. Amen. The, the makeup, God is supposed to be in everything for it to be good, for it to be right. Because if the Lord is not in it, if Jesus is not in it, it will begin to corrupt. It will begin to decay. It will begin to deteriorate. It will begin to rotten. Amen. If the Lord is not in it. Amen. So this had already started. Amen. The, if, if you would look at things, something happened after World War II, amen, the, the, the United States began to be prosperous. Television began to come into the mainstream, uh, that people began to be um, um, lax, that they had, um, they had finances, they had prosperity, that suburbs and things began to grow, amen. And so there began to be a secular age, amen. That uh, up until that time, there, there was no doubt that God is God over America as he is over all the nations. But especially in America with a godly heritage, that God is the God of America. But things began to happen as we began to increase and to prosper. It, it would be interesting to note that it is 70 years, amen, since 1946, amen. You know, it was 70 years that the people were in captivity. So there's, there's something about that 70, and the Bible says that God is supposed to turn the captivity of Zion after 70 years and those who have understanding. So God began to alert and awaken Daniel who was in captivity. He began to pray because he knew in the word of God that God is supposed to turn the captivity of Zion. Amen. And so the devil has moved in. There's systems and things which have been in place which the, the, the church agreed with financial systems and things which were in place which put God's people in captivity. There are things which were thought to be um, um, normal. Amen. It is normal, they say, they say, to, to watch TV and shows and movies that have certain plots and things like that and everything. And so what I'm saying is that the, the church was lulled to asleep, but now we're at a time where we must escape. We must be delivered. And God knew that. Amen. 
And so that is why the Lord had me preaching. You said, Apostle, why do you keep preaching on the anointing of Issachar, that understanding, and the anointing of Esther, knowing how to respond to the time, to be a type of the church and that virtuous woman, to, to know how to respond. Because if you can understand the anointing of Esther, the church can understand how to respond to Jesus. Amen. That if you could respond to Jesus as Lord, you could rise up, amen, and receive his anointing. His glory would be upon you. The glory of Jesus would be upon the church, amen. The church would be beautified, amen, glorious, beautiful, amen. That in the, the kingdom of God, beauty is attached to the glory. Glory, the beauty attached to the glory is attached to not being stained with sin or not partaking with those who do wickedness. Your garments are, are, are clean. Amen. That you are adorned correctly from the inside out. Amen. If, holy. Ha, ha, ha. Whoopa, tahista, pata. Husta, pataista, patata. Holy Ghost, you are adorned from the inside out. The, the, the Lord called women to, to, to symbolize this, to be an example, amen, of what the church is supposed to look like. And women have missed it all over the place. Amen. God called women to know what it meant to be beautified from the inside out. That is what is chosen of the Lord. That is what is received of, of the Lord, to, to know how, you know how to beautify the outside. Amen. He says you have to know how to be submitted, get this, to his authority that he has given unto you. And so he gave that example in husbands and wives. Amen. That the wife is submitted unto the husband. The husband loves the wife. Amen. That, that the, the husband doesn't say, well, that wife needs to be submitted unto me. And that wife doesn't say, well, that husband needs to love me. Amen. That we have a responsibility on, unto God to, to seek God how to um, exemplify the Lord. Amen. To, to bring forth the image which is of Christ. Amen. As a wife, as a husband. And then the Bible says that every woman... Or no woman should pray or prophesy with her head uncovered. And people have just erased that whole part of the Bible. They do not go to that part. They said Paul was a bigot, racist, sexist. He didn't know what he was talking about. Plus, it had to do with that time and we're in a different time and everything. And Paul was telling a secret. God gives secrets that will bless you. That if somebody tells you a secret, think about this. That two people, amen, someone whispers a secret in their ear and then they both begin to giggle and laugh because of the secret, amen. God wants you to laugh because of the secret, the revelation that he's revealing, amen, that that woman is not supposed to engage spiritually without a head covered. Eve, amen, because of Eve, Eve engaged spiritually with the devil without her head being covered, that her, her covering was Adam, but it was Eve that negotiated with the devil and she was deceived, the Bible says. So deception follows those whose head is uncovered. Amen. You believe deception. You believe that you're right and you're not right. Amen. And those that allow is they, they are the spirit of eunuchs. Amen. Men that allow, amen, that facilitate for a woman to engage spiritually. It should be your pleasure to rise up in, in the Lord, to be a spiritual covering, amen, to be in covenant, amen. God is talking about covenant. I'll get there. But that, that man and that woman in covenant, that's what marriage is, is in, it is covenant. And then that, that woman, amen, who says that God has called her to minister, praise God, 
that because of that, she shows that she is not of the spirit of Eve by, by professing that she has a spiritual covering. A man, a minister, a man, minister to cover her, a father figure. Amen. The Bible talks about how fathers, amen, they, they have control over their virgins. Amen. You have a father figure in ministry who covers you and you show that you're not under that same rebellious spirit of Eve. Amen. So we are at war. God's seed, amen, versus the devil's seed. Amen. Because of Jesus died upon the cross, God's seed is supposed to have supremacy in this earth realm. Amen. God's seed, amen, is supposed to have supremacy in this earth realm because we are submitted to God, the will of God, the, the, the wisdom of God, the spirit of God, that we are loyal unto the Lord. So you have to be able to distinguish the difference. Amen. To make sure that you are God's seed through the history of man, just just a quick history. Amen. That Adam knew his wife, Eve, and she bore Cain and Abel. Amen. Because sin was allowed in this earth. The Bible says that Cain was of the wicked one and he slew. He killed Abel, which was the seed of God. So Cain. Amen. He was the seed of the devil. He killed. Amen. That one which was the, the seed of God. Amen. And, and the Bible says that Abraham believed God for a child. But before Isaac came, that the, the child of the flesh was Ishmael. And Ishmael persecuted Isaac. Amen. That they which are of the devil's seed, they which are born of the flesh, Persecute they which are born of the son of promise, that which is the promise of God through the spirit. Amen. And we'll get there. So the flesh that persecutes and tries to kill, they which are the seed of God, which are of the spirit. Amen. And so you'll see that all through time. Amen. That the wickedness that is in this earth is because of wicked seed. They which are empowered by Satan to persecute those which are of the Lord. Amen. And so it is the right, righteous seed, which is the rightful heir, because Jesus is the rightful heir to this earth. And that we are his seed. The Bible says Jesus is the first fruit of those raised from the dead. Every seed produces after its kind. Amen. The Bible says the seed does not sin. And so as long as we let Jesus' seed by the Holy Ghost, that which is portrayed in our lives are supposed to be the, the, the seed which is of Jesus. Amen. As long as we are yielded to the Holy Spirit and the word of God, that which comes forth should manifest Jesus. Amen. And then you will be an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus, and you have a right to operate in a kingly and a priestly anointing and to rule over the wicked seed and to deal with that wicked seed which is in this earth. Amen. So from a kingdom perspective, God made Adam ruler over the whole earth. He gave him dominion. He made him to be a prince. Amen. Only in respect to the throne of God was God greater. So, so Adam was a crown prince. You got to look at things according to the kingdom. The Bible says God crowned him with glory and honor. Adam was a crown prince. That means that his crown, for him to be a prince, a ruler, his crown must be submitted unto God or the acknowledgement that God gave him that crown. But he did not. He rebelled against the Lord. And now there are seed of Satan in this earth. But the church is to produce children of God. The, the church is supposed to carry and bring forth children of God, seed of God. Amen. And so that's what the, the Esther shows, that, that virtuous woman is submitted unto the authority of God, the way that God placed the authority. It was God, amen, and, and God is the head of Jesus. 
And it is the Holy Spirit that, that manifests. He does not speak of his own. He, he manifests both Jesus and the Father. When the Holy Spirit manifests Jesus, it pleases the Father. So that's the order. And then to us, God brought us in on it. Amen. And so we are supposed to be submitted unto Jesus. The church is supposed to be submitted unto Jesus as we are submitted unto God. Amen. And so I want to show you that in the word of God, in the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter eight, verses four through six, it says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower, a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. And you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under his feet. And so what is man that you're mindful of him? You made him a little lower than the angels. That some translations say that word is Elohim. It, it is heavenly beings. Amen. And it means that man was made a little lower than God. Amen. I found out in, in the word of God, everything is there for a purpose. You don't throw anything out. <laughs> you don't throw anything out. But the, but the truth of the matter is that Adam was made a little lower than God. And the heavenly realm was supposed to rule over the earthly realm. So that is what that is saying. That, God, that Adam was made a little lower than God. And that if Adam was submitted the right way, the heavenly realm would move, would rule over the earthly realm. Amen. And so turn with me quickly to Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter three. Amen. So Adam was a crown prince. He's supposed to rule over this earth. He's supposed to give God godly seed. Amen. But when the devil was introduced into the mix, then wicked seed began to come about. Amen. But I want to show you something in the word of God. It says in Genesis chapter 3, this is after the fall. Amen. And verse, verse 15. And so God is speaking to the serpent, the devil. He says, and I will put in enmity, that is war and hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Okay, so there's a war, amen, in this earth between the devil's seed and the woman's seed that is speaking prophetically of Jesus being the seed. Amen. I'll show you that in the word of God, the immaculate conception that the, the seed of the woman will bruise Satan's head. So God has given woman a, a, a place, amen, where the seed of a woman will bruise Satan's head. But you said that that was speaking of Mary and it was, I'll show you. But God's seed continues to come forth in the woman and the church has a place. The, the woman or the wife is a type of the church. If you, can, if you can follow me, amen. And righteous seed is supposed to come from the woman. Righteous seed is supposed to come from the church. Amen. He says that, I would, that you're supposed to be at war. He says there is a war between the woman's seed and Satan's Seed, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his head. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow in your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Somebody says, that is of the curse. Well, w wait a minute. Let's, let's look at it and line it up with the word of God. All through the word of God, especially in the New Testament, it says, that the, the wife is supposed to be submitted unto a husband and she's supposed to reverence him. Amen. And so let's look at, he says, and I will greatly multiply your sorrow in your 
conception. Amen. So the woman is in sorrow. Amen. Because she is in this world and there is a struggle to bring forth godly seed because of the war, because of the enmity. Amen. Because of the spirit, which is of the world, the spirit, which is of the world, which tries to affect women. The spirit, which is of the world, which is Satan, tries to affect the church, to, to, to pummel her, to hurt her. To, to make her discouraged so that she would not bring forth righteous seed, godly seed, amen, that her womb would be released open for that which is of the world, amen, to bring children in under the spirit of the world and the wisdom which is of the world. So she, she has to be determined. This came because of Eve. In other words, this plight, amen. That, that she has to deal with this sorrow came because of Eve, because of what she did. So he says, I will multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. So somebody says, a man is not supposed to rule over. Listen, you have to see things in God's perspective. There is an order. No, a man does not beat a woman to try to make her comply. The woman yields to the position and the man takes the position. Amen. And now they are flowing with the Lord. As a, as a husband, I'll tell you this, that if I get out of the parameters of God, what God has called me pertaining to my wife, the, the, the Bible says that God is a witness. Amen. Between me and the wife of my youth. <laughs> you see, that if anybody, if, if you give yourself to God, amen, and the wisdom of God to, to do it in accordance to all your heart understands, if the other um, spouse gets outside of that parameter, then God will deal with that. God will be a witness to deal with that, to bring things into divine order. He will use your righteousness or let me say, your offerings of righteousness. Amen. God will use your offerings of righteousness to deal with the unrighteous, even the spouse. Amen. And so that's another teaching, but I want to show you these seats of power. Where did they come from? Whether they be righteous seed, whether they be unrighteous seed, there, there is a war for the seats of power to control the people. That's what's going on in this earth realm. Amen. In Luke chapter 1, the book of Luke chapter 1. All the way down to verse 31. This is the angel Gabriel speaking to Mary. He greeted her, said she was highly favored, that she had received favor of the Lord. And verse 31, and you shall, and you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. So he'll give him the throne, give Jesus the throne of David. Okay, so David represents the continuation of God's throne in this earth. And Jesus came from that, from that lineage in the flesh. Jesus came from that lineage. The throne of David, amen. And it says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there will be no end. So God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. From Jacob, we get the 12 patriarchs from whence comes the nation of Israel or the, the people of God, amen. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One that is born 
will be called the son of God. So how would, was Jesus born? How was he conceived? It was by the Holy Spirit. How did God's seed come into this earth? It was by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then verse 38, and Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And so she said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. In other words, I consent for my body and my womb to be used to carry the seed of God. Amen. Be it unto me according to your word. So those words continue to ring through the, the annals of time. Amen. To women and to the church. Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. Amen. I consent. Amen. For my body and my womb to be used to, to birth spiritual sons and daughters. Amen. I agree. It shall be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. Amen. To do the will of God, it is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. To bring forth godly seed. Amen. And this is what I'm hearing the Lord says. That, that you, the church has simply been living. They are not aware. They're not conscious of what is going on. And so they have been several steps behind because they're not conscious of spiritual things, nor have they um, received, amen, the things which are of God. And they have stumbled in those areas. They have not embraced certain parts of the word of God, amen. They have been estranged from God, but they try to coexist with God with the things that they wanted and the things that they liked, not knowing that everything in God fits together. Amen. It is, it is stone upon stone. It's layer upon layer is what I mean. Jesus is the stone, but, but the, the building is brick upon brick is, is what I'm saying, that we are lively stones built up into a spiritual house. And so if you're missing something, you're missing something. Amen. If you're, if you're missing something, you're not whole. If you're missing something, the house is not whole, is not built right. Amen. And so it is the Holy Spirit that we are to be born from above, born by the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit to be sons and daughters of God. Amen. So the Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. That's in Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit is involved with producing spiritual sons and daughters. We say sons because th that is the lineage of the Lord. Amen. But it includes the people of God, sons and daughters of God. Amen. So let's look at this, this lineage which is of the Lord, amen, which is supposed to be in this earth, which is supposed to be kings and priests, which is supposed to be able to bring peace in this earth and to beautify that which is ugly, <laughs> amen. That's our job. You say, I, I'm a, an ugly eradicator. That's what I do, you know. A woman can be beautiful, but she can be ugly, if you know what I mean. A woman can be beautiful, but she can be ugly on the inside. Situations can be ugly, amen, praise God, because they don't have God. They can spiral out of control, amen. And so our job is to bring the glory. We're, ha, 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 sons and daughters of glory. Glory, I'm throwing glory. We're sons and daughters of glory. Holy Ghost, praise be to God. The beauty of the Lord. Jesus is the fairest of 10,000. That, that beauty will get on a thing. It will change. It will transform a thing. It will beautify that which is ugly. Amen. So you should be able to identify that which is ugly. Amen. That which is of the devil is ugly. Holy Ghost. And that which is of the Lord is, is beautiful. Amen. Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. Amen. So God, he works by covenant. God works by covenant. Amen. And so it says in verse 13, then one who escaped came and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eschol and brother of Aner, 
and they were allies with Abram. So long story short, that Lot got himself um, kidnapped, him and his daughters and all of his stuff was kidnapped and that Abram heard about it, amen. And so he went to war. He, he armed his servants, amen, and went to war and he was able to deliver them. But we see here in verse 13 that Abram is called a Hebrew. A Hebrew is a Jew. A Jew is a, 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 the, the people of God. Amen. A Jew is a son or daughter of the Lord, belonging to God, of the lineage. Amen. And so the whole point I want you to see spiritually here, that Abram identified as a Hebrew. He, he identified as a son of God, of the lineage. Remember what God told him, to leave your family, leave your household, go to a land that I will show you. Amen. Abram, hearing the voice of God, left out. The Bible says he believed God. It was accounted unto him for righteousness. By faith, he entered in and became a son of God by covenant. He then, they, they, they cut the covenant. And I won't go into that. Amen. He cut a covenant with God. Amen. And so God made him a son. He called himself a Hebrew. Amen. And then just one chapter over, Genesis chapter 15, just verse 4, for the sake of time, that Abram was saying like, Lord, what are you going to give me? He says, I haven't got a seed. I haven't got a son yet. And this servant in my household will be my heir. That if I, get, if I die, the oldest servant in my household would be the heir since I don't have a son. And God says, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but the one which will come from your own body shall be your heir. In other words, the slave, the servant will not be the heir. So it is the son who is the heir. Amen. That by the spirit, remember, it is those that are led by the spirit of God. These are the children of God. We are the sons of God. Those that are led by the spirit, they that are born of God, led by the spirit. Amen. So the lineage, amen, is, is a spiritual lineage uh, that we are identifying with the God of heaven. You remember what Abram said, I lifted my hand to the most high God. Amen. Not to take a shoe latch, amen, from the king of Sodom, lest you say you've made me rich. His allegiance is to the God of heaven. He's entered into covenant. God says that, that you are a Hebrew. You're my son. And so you shall have an inheritance from the Lord. So Abram, who became Abraham when God changed his name, received an inheritance from the Lord. Amen. And that inheritance was, first of all, a son. Isaac is called the son of promise. Amen. So it is not the slave, it is not those that are yoked to the world by the spirit of the world. It is spirits which yoke. The Holy Spirit yoke you to Jesus. Jesus says, come unto me, all who labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. How are you going to learn? By the yoke, the Holy Spirit. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. In the same way, the devil yokes people unto himself by sin, by the spirit of the world, where you are not uh, conscious to operate in the, in the kingdom of God. You only operate by the spirit of the world and by the wisdom which is of the world. Your eyes, your spiritual eyes are not open. You, you have not taken that place of sonship. And so there's the Holy Spirit that brings you into sonship by, by covenant with, with the Lord. So Isaac is called the son of promise. Amen. And quickly, Galatians chapter 4. The book of Galatians chapter 4. All of this, whether you know it or not, has to do with the anointings of Issachar, which is to understand. Listen, you are appearing in time. You are not born by accident. When you appear in time, you got to start 
operating according to the kingdom of God. It's the Holy Spirit that illuminates the word of God and activates a person to be a son or daughter of God. You're born again by the spirit and then you should be filled with the spirit where you are baptized into the spirit realm to operate in the kingdom of God. It is not strange to you. I'll tell you whether the things of the spirit are strange. Do you always look for worldly solutions? Amen. Or do you look for the solutions which are in the word of God? Are there things in the word of God that you say are outdated that don't apply? Or maybe we don't have the necessary understanding that it is it is old fashioned. Amen. Then you're operating by the spirit of, of the world if you are saying these things. Amen. Because it is it is this it is the faith. Of God, which causes you to defy the principles which are of the world. It is it is faith that causes you to walk on the water. Amen. The, the world says you can't walk on water. Jesus says, come walk on the water. Amen. It, it, is, it is faith in the Lord. Amen. And you will operate by the Holy Spirit. So Galatians chapter 4. Amen. Beginning with verse 26, amen. And we'll read through um, 29 to the end of the chapter. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So that's New Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is above, is talking about heaven. That heavenly city, New Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So he's talking to Christians. We were born out of heaven, New Jerusalem, and we were born to be free. Amen. It says, for it is written, rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Amen. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, our children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. So we see it in the word of God that Isaac was born according to the spirit. You may not have known that. Ishmael was born according to the flesh. Amen. And he persecuted Isaac. Amen. And so Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. But I want to get into that just quickly. Re rejoice, O barren, you who did not bear. In other words, barren means not, not able. In, in other words, your, your womb is closed. You, you're, you're not able naturally to have children. Amen. But the Bible says you are supposed to rejoice. In other words, we, we look at people like Hannah, amen, who was in distress, who was mourning, who was in sorrow because her, she was barren, amen. And because of that barrenness, she cried out to God that if God would give her a child, that she would give him unto the Lord. And so we see a principle here that the, the, the woman that, that was barren, that if she would give that child unto the Lord, in other words, if the womb seems to be closed, amen, that, that is because God has a, 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 a obligation, a calling for that womb to give him a godly seed. So what seemed like distress and sorrow, amen, caused her to cry out to God. It is a, it is a disposition to want to give God godly seed, amen. And that disposition should come upon the church, amen, to give God godly seed. In other words, you do not want to be a part of producing wicked seed, amen. You do not want to be a part. And if you are a woman believing to give birth, that if you would give that child unto the Lord, in other words, you do not want to be a part of birthing forth wicked seed, Amen. But the seed, the Bible says that that which opening the matrix of the womb belongs to God and it is blessed. Not that, that there is anyone that cannot come 
unto the Lord. But your desire for seed is to bless the kingdom of God, to inhabit heaven, amen, to populate heaven. And so that woman has a, a place with God that, that as I look into the scriptures and the Lord shows me, that that woman has a place spiritually with the Lord to have much to say spiritually about birthing forth that which is of the Lord. People say that the woman is, is very spiritual, that that is unto the Lord and it is for a purpose. The woman is not supposed to belong to the world. The woman is not supposed to belong to the spirit of the world. Amen. The church is not supposed to belong to the world, nor the spirit of the world. It works together. The lineage, God wants seed. Amen. And so Abram was a Hebrew. Abraham begat Isaac. Amen. Isaac was a son of promise. And Isaac begat Jacob, who is called Israel. Amen. Who is uh, the father of over Israel in, in the flesh. And so he was able to bring forth seed unto God. The, the people of God was produced, amen, from Jacob or Israel. And if the Lord allows, I'll get into that a little bit, amen. But I just, I want to end it with this, that God told Eve, he says that I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception that with sorrow and pain shall you bring children into the world. And then the Bible declares that she shall be saved. If that woman is submitted unto her husband and that that spiritual uh, woman is submitted unto her spiritual head or, or covering, amen, that she shall be saved in childbearing. All this is in the word of God that the woman is saved in producing godly seed, amen. And so it has to do with desire. Hannah had great desire to give the Lord a son. She had a desire for a son and that desire switched to give God a son, amen. I believe that women have power in prayer to travail, amen, just, just like men. But I believe that there is a special place for that submitted woman who is covered as she engages in the spirit realm, that God will give her babies, amen, that God will open up her spiritual womb and give her babies. God will open up the spiritual womb of the church and give the church babies when they learn how to, to be postured with Jesus as Lord, yielded and submitted unto the Lord, and the desire to be for Jesus. We have many desires. God gives us the desires of our heart. But what does the Lord Jesus want, who is our Lord? Amen. That men and women, if, if our desire is for Jesus, to allow him to rule over us, then it shall bring forth spiritual seed. And I thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for your anointing upon your word, your blessing upon your word, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you would grant us understanding to know how to respond in this time. The Lord, that you have given it unto us to be kings and priests unto God. Amen. That we have a kingly inheritance and a priestly inheritance. Amen. From God to operate uh, under the kingly anointing and the priestly anointing in this earth realm. Amen. Lord, that we are special to you, that we are a treasure unto you, Lord God. Amen. So, Father God, I pray that you would demonstrate your faithfulness unto us as we yield to you in this time. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.